Yo, what it do, Ghost Nation? It's your boy, Ghost Rider. Welcome back to another episode of Ghost Movies. Now, on this episode, I want to talk about Mando. Episode 5, The Book of Boba Fett. Episode 5, Return of the Mandalorian. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. This one right here was the Mandalorian, right off the bat. There's a dark saber. There's a present for Baby Yoda or Baby Grogu. And yes, the little Jedi Wham Bam is going to be part of Season 3. But right here, I love this episode so freaking much because right out the gate, we get Mandalorian in action about to claim a bounty. And he says those favorite, those favorite his favorite catchphrase, I could either bring you in warm or I could bring you in cold. And bro, he brought him in cold. Cold as ice. Mando was able to use the dark saber and took out all those goons for this bounty that he was claiming. He had a tracker on him, a tracker beacon, and he found that bounty right there in a meat freezer or a fridge or whatever. And I love that he's using the dark saber more. He didn't want it, but Bo-Katan couldn't take it in season two because she w wants to fight. You have to win it by combat. And she didn't want to challenge him for that. So because Mando beat Moff Gideon, he was able to win that dark saber. And he lost baby Grogu in the process to freaking Luke. So Mando had nothing. So he took his best gear, best car spare, and he has now the dark saber. And this guy is killing folks. He chopped his bounty in half, man. In half. Right after he slammed him onto the table. Then chopped off his head. This is the Mandalorian I want. This is what Boba Fett should have been from episode one. How do you let the Mandalorian come on your TV show series and he outdoes, he outshines you, he outworks you? Boba Fett wants to be all noble and shit. I want you to be a badass, a cutthroat. I will kill first and ask questions later type of uh, Mandalorian. That's what I want. I'm so happy that we got Mando back for this season. I was like, yo, when is Mando going to show? When is and we finally got him episode five. And this episode was great. Directed by Dallas... Bryce Dallas Howard. I was so happy because I loved her episodes in in Mandalorian season two and season one. Bryce Dallas Howard, she just has, she has the it factor for Star Wars. She does. Then I love this next scene because now Mando, he finally links up with the other Mandalorian. There was a female Mandalorian. I forgot her name from season two. She's the armorer. She's the one that always forges best call armor for Mando. She's the one that put that um that best call armor on him with the horn, with the rhino horn. She forged that armor for him in season one. She's back again. And there's another um Mandalorian. He's the one that actually patched up Mando because Mando got hurt. That's one thing I was like, yo, man, how you get hurt wielding the dark saber? I know you got to get used to it, but you're fighting against it. And that's exactly what he did in this episode. He's not used to it. He's trying to use his strength. It, when you wield a lightsaber or a dark saber, it's all about mental. Be one with the force. Stop trying to, stop trying to fight against the blade. Your mind tells the blade where to go, what to do. So Amanda has to master that. He has to master that. And I love this because he's getting patched up by one of the Mandalorians. And then all of a sudden, he has to learn how to train with this. He has to learn how to use it because he's going to need this. The Beskar armor, he actually gave it to the armorer because she he wanted to make a gift for baby Gogu. So now he, all, the only weapon he has is his blaster and a dark saber. And man, you better master this because now, just like in this episode, you're going to have people challenge you for this dark saber. The one, one of the Mandalorians who was patching him up challenged him for that dark saber. I think it was... um. I forgot his name. Damn, I just watched it too. It's, it's on the tip of my brain. But anyway, this Mandalorian was like the medic. And the armor, she takes care of the armor. But she knows how to fight. But she does all the armor for all the Mandalorian. But this Mandalorian was like a big, beefy Mandalorian. I want to say Vizsla. He's, he's from the house of Vizsla. And he challenged Mando because that dark saber was forged by the house of Viz of Vizsla. So he challenged Mando, and he got his ass beat. But at, at one point, it looked like Mandalorian was about to lose. It looked like Mando was about to lose. Din Din Jurin looked like he's about to lose this combat, 
And at the last second, he pulls out his dagger. But he was about to cut his throat. And then the armorer, she decided to stop the match. It's done. Then she started interrogating both of them. Uh, Vizsla, of House Vizsla, have you ever removed your helmet? Has anybody else removed it for you? He said no. Then she asked Mando, had Din Djurin, has anybody ever removed your helmet? Have you removed your helmet? He said yes. Then you can no longer be part of Mandalorian. You cannot be part of the Mandalorian creed. And he said, what can I do to atone? She said, you got to go under the minds of Mandalore to atone for your sins. But Mandalore was all blown up. So she said, okay, well, there's nothing, you could, there's nothing for you here. You can't be part of this creed. And he said, this is the way. Oh, my God. It was just so good to see him training in his episode. And they brought all the Mandalorians back. There's only three of them left. And Boba Fett. But it was great. Then we get to see, we get to the scene now that I love because now Mando went back to that same lady who's the mechanic on Tatooine. He or Maz Vespa or whatever, he needs her, not Vespa, I'm thinking of that last episode, Maz Isley. He needs a ship, his Razor Crest. He, he was supposed to get another Razor Crest. But she said, I'm not going to give you another Razor Crest. That's a gunship. I'm going to give you a Starfighter, an N1 Starfighter. These are the same Starfighters that was in Return of the Jedi when they blew up. Well, those are the X-Fighters, X-Wings. But anyway, these Starfighters were also, I think, in Return of the Jedi as well. And I love it because this is one of the original Starfighters from the Galactic Republic. And this one is off the grid. This is one of the first OG ships that was designed. And it was a rust bucket. But between Mando and that mechanic, they were able to repair that ship. And man, that thing can move. That thing can move. Then at the end of the episode, after they built the ship and Mando took it out for a spin, here comes Finnick. Shand. Finnick Shand shows up. And she said, we got a job for you. I have money here. I got credits to give you. Boba Fett needs muscle. And he needs your service. And Mandalorian is like, oh, I'm going to do it on the house. You can keep your credit. You can keep your money. I'll do it on the house because Boba Fett has helped me keep Grogu safe. So I'll do it on the house. And I love it, man. I love it because of the fact that now we're going to have Boba Fett and Mando teaming up together so that Boba Fett could run the crime syndicate of Tatooine. I love this, man. This episode was great, great, great. It's, I know it's late. I know it's four in the morning, but I had to bring out this episode because I'm not going to lie. The book of Boba Fett has been a slow burn. Besides episode two, I... Love this episode. I did the episode one because that was the introduction, how he came out the Starlight Pit and everything. But I have not done an episode, uh, uh, episode reaction or review talking about Boba Fett since episode one. I love episode two. Episode three was okay. Episode four was the worst one because of those Vespas, those Power Rangers Vespa pod bike races with different colors looking like Power Rangers. And that's, that chase scene was terrible, terrible. But I know that these are setup episodes. I'm not going to call them fillers. They're setup episodes. They're setting you up for something greater. And this episode right here was a setup episode for Mando to reunite with Boba Fett. And I love this episode, man. Just to see Mando come in and be a badass, I'm going to take you in warm or cold. I love when he says that. Because no matter what happens, your ass is coming in. I have your picture right here in the hologram. And you're going to tell me it's not you? You can make this easy, you can make this hard. I'm going to kick your ass. Either way, you're coming in. You're a bounty, and I always collect my bounties. That's Mando's attitude, and I love this episode, man. So fucking good. This is Star Wars. This is Star Wars. And I stayed up to watch this episode. I did. I wasn't going to stay up, and I stayed up. Thank you, Bryce Dallas Howard. Thank you, John Favreau, because I'm telling you, you wrote this TV series, and man, it has some weak points, man. I'm sorry, John Favreau. You usually put out good shit, but this episode right here, and, and you put that writing, that script into Bryce Dallas' hand, Bryce Dallas Howard, I'm telling you, she's great in the Jurassic Park um, franchise, Jurassic World franchise, but man, her behind the camera, man, shoot, I will watch all her movies. All right, Ghost Nation, that's my full review of freaking Boba Fett. Mando, the return of Mandalorian. Mando is back. And every time I say Mandalorian, I have to say, Mando! I just have to scream it at the top of my lungs because I love Mandalorian so fucking much. 
All right, Ghost Nation, leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. Also, hit the like button on this episode. Hit the like button for this video. Show your boy some love. And also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest videos that I put out for y'all. All right, like I said, I'm going to catch you on the next video. Ghost Rider out.